praise to you, or giving praise to you, the many ways in which you have already touched us on this journey together and draw us closer to your Son. We ask you to continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us as we venture to these sites today and to continue to draw us ever closer into uh, this wonderful journey you have planned for us as we spend this time together to seek to come to know you and to love you even more deeply. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. at the Mount of Beatitudes, the Sea of Galilee right there, and we're kind of up this slope from the sea, kind of like a theater where Jesus stood and taught the people, and here we all are from this. But there's, there's a whole lot of history that goes, obviously, prior to that. If, you, if you're looking in the, uh, at me at any of the pictures, obviously I wasn't 21 when I entered the Friars. Uh, so there's a lot that went on before that time. Uh, there's a, uh, there's a, another priest, that uh, another Friar, that works with me a lot back at the university. Um, he's, a, he's one of our vice presidents. And uh, he also uh, came into our community later on in life. He was um, uh, a few years even older than I am. And uh, so we both, he was actually ordained a year before me, so in 2005, and then he preached at my first Mass. His name is, is Father Nathan, but both of us had... This is the water, headwaters of the Jordan River that flow out from underneath this rock at Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus said, you are rock, and on this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell, right there, will not prevail against it. Our conditioned Mercedes bus. How long would it take him and his disciples to get here? A couple good three days? And if you started walking and the sun came up and quit when the sun went down, how far? That's a long way that we just came. Uphill. And it's uphill, exactly. We're going up, up, up into the up into the Golan Heights. So my guess is three days at least, and these guys are good at walking. But why would Jesus come all the way up here to bring them uh, to ask the question? I think it's because of the backdrop of what you're going to see. This river that comes right out from the bottom of that mountain. It comes right out of the underneath the cave. And Jesus brought them here because of the backdrop. I don't think that he came specifically right up to here because this was a very pagan, wicked site. I think he stood off at the distance a bit and used this as the backdrop. That's the way I speculate what happened here. Because a Jew would never go up where they're having these orgies and sexual dances and all of these things, calling upon the gods and whatever. But knowing what was happening here and what this stood for at the time, it was the perfect backdrop for Je what Jesus wanted to say. So let's get started. And you and I will build my church upon this rock. That's what he's going to do is build his church on the rock. When you came here in Jesus' time, there is a huge rock that you're going to see. It's one of the foothills of the Mount Hermon.
There goes the goat yogurt, called Lebna. Goat yogurt first goes on the bread, and a little olive oil, and then the zata herb. Then it's wrapped up tight and put on the grill to get warm. And there's a sandwich. There's my friend who makes these uh, sandwiches, Drew's bread. These were all made in the shop, as you already saw in the other video, and then he puts them on the grill. How you doing? Puts them on the grill and then brings them here, and that's fast food Drew style. Everybody's eating their either their falafels or their Drew's breads. What do you think? Good. 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 This is fast food Drew style. There goes some <laughs> Drew's bread, and there's more falafel. Steve Ray here. We are now standing on the border with Syria and Lebanon as well. We're looking out over the land that's being terrorized and attacked by all of the Muslim fanatics. Here's our group. We're explaining to them about the situation, not the way they hear about it in the American media. And I just explained how this is the place where St. Paul came from way down in Jerusalem through this valley and across over that mountain and just a half an hour is Damascus. Right over there now, our brothers and sisters are being slaughtered. Just a few minutes ago, bombs were going off. They were heard here. And we're gonna pray the divine mercy for our brothers and sisters over there who are suffering under this terrible, terrible, uh, demonic oppression. Father Sean Sheridan here on the, the border of, between Syria and Israel. Just a few moments ago, we were able to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet for our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted here. Uh, and we continue to pray for them and ask God's blessing upon them. And as soon as we can fin finished completing uh, our prayer today, we actually heard a bomb explode over in the region there. So please continue to pray for our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted. first weekend I met this beautiful young woman. It was orientation weekend and I ended up meeting my soon-to-be wife, although she didn't realize it yet. I think I kind of figured it out sooner than she did. <laughs> Again, it took me about two years before to, to, to convince her to go out on a date with me. It's just university's youth conferences. And, um, and so it was first 6%, 7%. And uh, last year it was... Uh, uh, Walking in the church of the multiplication of loaves and fish, and we used to go in that door, but uh, a couple months ago, some fanatical right-wing Jews who don't want Christians here lit this place on fire. And so the area where we used to come in and stand over there is now blocked off because of the construction. Here you see the, the fire that night, and I'll show you a few more pictures too. That, this on the other side of the wooden wall here, that used to be full of fish, a baptismal font, and the olive tree which represents Christianity. I'll show you in Gethsemane trees that are over 2,000 years old. This this olive tree. And uh, this one here, when they built this church, due to the history that we have here, and I'll share it with you, 
Symbolically, they planted an olive tree in the center as a symbol of the Christian presence. We have been cut and we have been trimmed and pruned several times, but here we are, we're still here. Now, when now we'll go into the church. Our group is in here now, learning about it. Now look at the damage from the fire there. And uh, here we are inside the church. Beautiful church of the multiplication of loaves and fish. And this marks the place where Jesus multiplied the loaves and fish. And yes, it was a real miracle. It was not just Jesus teaching them how to share. It was a real miracle. It took place right under this altar. After that, we went to the Church of the Primacy of Peter, where Jesus said, feed my sheep and tend my lambs. It's a beautiful place. We walked down to the church, and before we actually saw the, the lake, I gave them a talk about John chapter 21, where Jesus told them to cast their net in on the other side, and he brought, they brought in 153 fish, and then Jesus fed them breakfast and asked Peter three times, do you love me? And Peter responded, yes. And I explained this all in about 20 minutes, this very detailed and beautiful passage. And then we saw the site and got to enjoy it. This marks the place where Jesus fed his disciples after the resurrection in John chapter 21. This is called the Mensa Christi, the table of Christ, where he fed them breakfast. This group is just excellent, and we had extra time today, so we stopped at Chorazim, a place where Jesus walked. As we're walking through these streets, we realize that Jesus walked through this place and saw these same stones and buildings. I took them all to the synagogue and showed them this chair of Moses. It's a facsimile of one that's in the Israel Museum. Each synagogue had one of these chairs, and I explained it all and about the whole city from the chair. Then I took everyone to our favorite restaurant, a Bear's Shulamit. We got off the bus, went all the way up here. Look at this beautiful restaurant, looking over the Hula Valley and Mount Hermon. It's a nice place, isn't it? Everybody loves the Bear's Shulamit. At this meal, everybody bonds and it becomes a family after tonight. Here's the owner, Moise. He owns the restaurant. This is my friend. Lakai, they're very good.